This screencast will talk about the Cold War, an event between 1945 and 1991. Now the Cold War was a conflict, worldwide conflict, that was due to disputes of, on two different levels. Let's take a look at the causes. The Cold War was an economic dispute. The two sides that faced off in the Cold War, one side was represented people that believed in capitalism as the correct or best form of economy in the world, and the other side believed that communism was the best form of economy in the world. So reflect back on your notes about capitalism and communism to better understand that point. But one side believed in capitalism, the other side believed in communism in the Cold War. Now it was also a political dispute. For the most part, those countries that believed in capitalism had representative governments. And the countries during the Cold War that were communist had dictatorships. That wasn't necessarily always the case, but for the most part, it's a general uh, helpful way to think about the Cold War. So our two sides are the capitalists, who for the most part have representative governments, and communists who lived in dictatorship-type governments. Now let's take a look at some specific um, events that happened during the Cold War. The first thing we'll look at is the Truman Doctrine. As you can see in the text here, um, in the picture, that's called the Truman Doctrine due to President Harry Truman in the U.S. He's the one that kind of uh, authors, uh, is the author of this here. Here we go. Um, so after World War II, many countries across the globe entered civil wars where believers in communism and capitalism fought. Fearful that these countries would become communist, U.S. President Harry Truman proposed the United States provide economic and military support to those countries to defeat the communists. Essentially, the United States was trying to contain communism. In other words, they wanted to prevent it from spreading outside the Soviet Union. This desire guided America's foreign policy for the remainder of the Cold War. So you can see here an example. The Americans during the Cold War are capitalists and representative government, and the Soviet Union is communist and dictatorship. And in these other countries around the world, there are civil wars being fought, and the United States supports the capitalists in those fights to defeat the communists. So the United States essentially tried to contain communism and prevent it from spreading outside the Soviet Union. That's the idea of the Truman Doctrine, contain communism. Next we'll look at the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was a plan that uh, devised by United States Secretary of State George Marshall. That's where its name come from, comes from. The plan called for a comprehensive program of economic assistance for the war-ravaged countries of Western Europe. It was America's hope that if these economies became healthy again, they would not shift to communism. So the idea was that in, after World War II, much of Europe was rebuilding. If the United States supplied these economies with materials and economic resources, then perhaps they will see us as friendly, see us as the uh, right way to be in the world and would, um, um, I guess, how should I say it, uh, go along with our way of life, the United States way of life, capitalism and a representative government. So that's the idea for the Marshall Plan. Next event we'll look at is partition plans for Germany. A partition means a division, so to divide up something. And so in this case, we're dividing up Germany. Remember, Germany was the um, under the Nazis in World War II, underneath Hitler. So it was the main aggressor uh, in Europe during World War II. After the war is over, the Allies look to rebuild Germany. What they do is they divide it up. So after World War II, Germany was divided amongst the Allied powers. Each Allied power got a zone. Then, on top of that, Germany's capital city, Berlin, was divided into two as well. Now, so what's the problem with that? If you notice, the Soviet Union controls part of Germany after the war, and then the British, Americans, and French control another zone. Now the problem is this. The Soviet Union, again, is communist and a dictatorship during this time. The British, Americans, and French are capitalists and more representative governments. So this line that separates the two sides in Germany becomes a line of conflict for the Cold War. Now, specifically, Germany's capital was divided into two as well. And this was an, um, an event when this happened. They called the uh, construction of 
the wall in between the two sides, the Berlin Wall. Let's take a look. Construction of the Berlin Wall began on August 13, 1961. Its purpose was to divide East and West Berlin. The wall was being built by the Soviets and the Soviet Union in order to stop the flood of people who had been attempting to make their way out of communist East Germany. During the construction of the wall, some of the streets that were alongside the barrier were torn up so that cars and other vehicles would not be able to make their way through the other side. Soldiers were stationed at the wall with orders to shoot anyone who tried to escape from either side. In addition to this, minefields, chain fences, uh, electric fences, you could say there, were set up to further prevent people from escaping. So if we look back at Germany again, you've got a communist side of Germany and then a capitalist side of Germany, and then that same division happens to the capital city of Berlin. On one side of the wall were the capitalist side, and on one side of the wall were the communist side. Now the last things we'll take a look at are the two groups that formed during the Cold War. The first group we'll look at is NATO. NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This was found on April 4, 1949, by countries Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, and the United Kingdom, and the United States. NATO's main goal was to be an alliance of these countries to help each other resist communism. Another one of the main points of NATO was that all the countries involved considered an attack on one to be an attack on all. If a country were to attack one of the countries, it would be met with an armed response from all of the other countries that were part of NATO. This method was done to keep security in North Atlantic countries. So NATO, again, an attack on one is considered an attack on all, and NATO is the capitalist side during the Cold War, the, cap the alliance of capitalist countries. On the other side, you have the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact was an agreement that took place in Eastern Europe and included East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Albania, Bulgaria, and the Soviet Union. Its purpose was to establish the communist alternative to NATO. The Warsaw Pact, like NATO, had a consultative committee, civilian general, secretary general, and a military commander-in-chief, and a full staff of soldiers below them. Like NATO, the members of the pact considered an attack on one to be an attack on all. The countries involved in the Warsaw Pact would also not interfere in each other's internal affairs and problems, and they would respect their privacy. So the Warsaw Pact is, again, another alliance, but this time this is an alliance of communist countries, and they are opposed to NATO. So the world was split into two camps, or much of the world was split into two camps as a result of the Cold War.